really slippery so that it's more sensitive to you feeling Sorry, what's up man you feeling loss of resistance so I draw up about three cc's of the stuff or two and a half cc's it doesn't have to be accurate and then I leave a little bit of air in there when I'm getting ready to do the procedure but if you put your finger on this of course you have sterile gloves on put your finger on this and then you push watch the glass around here and you push against it it fills that whole glass syringe with a little bit of moisture so that it's a lot more slippery now you gotta be careful because if you just let go of it it'll fall right out the plunger falls right out so when I put it in I just put it in like that aimed up Benji, our pagers don't go off. What are you doing, man? Hey, Marcus. What's up, man? You need me? No, no, no. This guy. The narcs. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Sorry. So, she, is the patient writhing <laughs> in pain right now? Our patient? Oh, he's okay. No, he's good. So you draw your water up, get your loss of resistance swims ready. Sorry about that. Then you draw, okay. drop your test dose, and I usually use this big one. Some people use this for their loss of resistance, but I use it for my test dose. And I, I draw, it, draw it up with a straw. Um, should we draw everything up with a straw? Probably, but I, I'm kind of set in my ways. I'm uh, and so I draw it up with this. Uh, now, patients numbed up as you go in and numb up their, their spine or their skin over their spine with what you're using, uh, the 1% lidocaine with. And then once they're numbed up, you tell them, all right, keep nice and still. You feel a little bit of pressure, and they usually do feel some pressure. Sometimes they'll hurt, and if they hurt, you put a little more local through there, and they usually go away. So this is the big-ass two needle. It's a 17-gauge needle. It has a stylet in it, made out of plastic. And it's important to keep the stylet in there when you're introducing the needle so you don't get a uh, plug of skin or whatever. Um, and it takes a little bit of effort to get that in there because it's not really that sharp. It's kind of blunt, and it's, it's made that way so that you can put it past it. It's made that way so that when you get to where you need to go, instead of putting a hole in the dura, you push it away. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't guarantee it. So if you poke a hole in dura, these guys are going to have a headache. And there's a couple of things you can do about that, but we'll talk about that after. So once you put that in, you anchor it just like you would the introducer in the, in the spinal kit. You feel for where it feels like it's fixed. You're like, okay, there. I could, I could bang on it and it doesn't just flop down, it actually kind of gives you some resistance and stays sticking straight up. You, once, you, once you get that point, or point where you're feeling it's anchored, you pull the stylet out and you put this on the end of it. Some people use only air, some people use only saline. I, use, I like to use a combination of both. I usually like having a cc of air in there. And the reason I do that is it gives me not only a visual feel, because I, I mean not only a feel but a visual indicator. I can see how that bubble is compressing. If it's just all water, you don't have any, you don't have any visual kind of feel for it. So I like to have a little bit of air. That's just a personal thing, um, so I could kind of see how much it's compressing and how much force it's taking for me to get, uh, how much force it's taking me to get that fluid to go out. And so once the needle's in place, I start advancing. So this is this is now without the stylet, and this is on there. And I start advancing. You hold the needle just like you would, so you'll, you'll work with people who have different techniques as well, right? You'll have people who want you to hold the needle like this and advance slowly this way. You'll have people who want you to hold the needle like this. So usually you're anchoring about this much. And then I, this is just the way I do it. Like I said, there's many ways to do this. I like going like this, advance a, cent, advance a millimeter, a millimeter, check, advance, check, advance, check, advance. Oh, that went easy. And then I'm like, okay, you're in the right place. So you're looking for a loss of resistance, and that loss of resistance occurs after you pass the ligamentum flavum. So once you pass that place, that's the epidural space. If you see free flow fluid, fluid that's a bad thing. You're like, oh, man, that's a, that's a spinal. Um, if you're on the labor deck, you can do a couple things. You can be like, all right, well, yeah, I poked a hole in your spine, in your dural sac. You can put the catheter right in there. It'll be a spinal catheter. Realize... When you put medicine in it, you have to decrease the dose substantially. You go from what you normally use for an epidural, which is anywhere between uh, 5 to 20 cc's of local anesthetic to 1 cc. That's all you need to put for, for that, usually, of buprivacaine. So if you make a hole in it, you can thread a catheter and have pretty pretty good confidence that your analgesia will work because it's in the, you have confirmation, you have CSF. Um, another thing you can try is just to take it out try another level. 
Um, but now realize you can have a patient that's probably going to have a postural puncture headache. You can minimize a postural puncture headache if you thread the catheter and leave it in for 24 hours after delivery. Um, so some people don't like doing that because they are, they're afraid that the nurses upstairs might put something through there. Um, as long as you communicate with everybody, this is a spinal catheter, you should be fine. But that's to each you know, provider's um, preference. Now, if you're in the right place, you, thread the ca you start threading the catheter. Um, things you need to know, usually we thread these in <coughs> anywhere between three to five centimeters into the space. And these, ca these things are nine centimeters long. Now, to get five centimeters out, there's a nice way to kind of cheat. So, two hashes is 10, three hashes is 15. You put it so that the 15 sits in the window, and that gives you five centimeters in the space. That one hash is five. So, if you see 15 in the window, that's a good place to be. Now, when you remove the needle, you have to push while you pull back. Otherwise, if you just remove the needle, you pull your catheter out. So you have to advance the, this as you're drawing the needle out of the person's skin. Um, and then realize, when you found your loss of resistance, you have to also figure out, just to verify where you're at. So say you lost your resistance at five. So this is where it's situated. So one, two, three, four, five. So this is where it's at the skin right there. Um, Five plus five, because you want five in the five in the space, right? Would be ten. However, to see that, you have to so you have to advance this as you pull this out, and then once you're completely out, you confirm. You're like, oh crap, look at that! I'm at fifteen. So you have to pull it back. Feed more than you need because you can't push back in once you've pulled it out. Just feed more and then adjust as as you find appropriate. Um, and when you take it out. Don't be sloppy like I just showed you when you take the catheter out. Have positive control of it so that when you take it out, you do something like this. So that the catheter doesn't flop around and get contaminated. Um, so that's that's how you put it in. And once the catheter is in place, all you have to do at that point is secure it and, and give it a test. So this is a filter so that things that go into the catheter don't get contaminated. This is where your test dose was in. This is a 1.5% lidocaine. Um, I usually will fill it because this has air in it, so I usually fill that up a little bit until it's gone. And then on the end of your catheter, you have to put this alligator clip. And the way this works is it has to be all the way in, hubbed. If it's not all the way in, it's like partially in, you're not gonna, it's not going to work. It has to be all the way in, hubbed, and then you just clip it down. And if it's not all the way in, you can always unclip it and snug it in. So that gets clipped, you add this on, and then you aspirate. You, go, you aspirate for a while, because getting fluid to come back from this will take a while. I mean, it's long, long tube, really thin, really thin. yeah, the Laplace's law. I mean, you have to, if, you, if it was a bigger tube, it'll be to the fourth power, that'll be easier to pull back. But anyway, so you, you withdraw it, and if you don't see any CSF or blood, pretty good. If, you, if the person didn't get any paresthesias, you're pretty good. Then you look at the vital signs, make sure they're, you know, work, check, take a look at where their heart rate and blood pressure are, um, <coughs> and then you give three cc's. That's the standard, kind of standard test dose. Three cc's of this stuff. Now, as you're doing that, you tell them, hey, let me know if you're getting any ringing in your ears, metallic taste in your mouth, or if your butt cheeks go numb. If your butt cheeks go numb, you might be in the spinal space, and you need to consider slowing slowing down. If they start getting ringing in their ears, you might be vascular. If they start getting metallic taste in your mouth, you might be vascular. If their heart rate shoots up 10, 10 beats or the blood pressure shoots up 10 beat, uh, uh, 20 cc, 20, milli, 20 millimeters of mercury, you might be intravascular because the epinephrine that's in here, that would be 15 likes of epi that you just gave, um, would register that. Now it's confounding because if they're having contraction at the same time, you're like, was that the contraction or was that my medicine? So there's not really a great indicator. But the best and most sensitive indicator is the tinnitus. If they get tinnitus, you're very likely intravascular. And most people don't wait long enough. It usually takes about five to ten minutes for that to even work. But most of us just put it in and go, how are you feeling after about two minutes? And then 
start securing stuff down with tape and all that stuff. Um, so once once that test dose is in, if I'm confident that's in the right place, I push the rest of it in to give them a little bit of a head start of analgesia, and then I spray the back with some of the uh, via drape, which is just a sticky solution. Put a tegaderm over this, tape it up over their shoulder, and then hook them up to the pump. And then there's many ways, many settings that you could set once you have them hooked up on the pump. Um, so complications with these things are relatively rare, but they do happen. Um, Postural puncture headache, infections, damage to underlying structures, mm -hmm. it not working, those are all things that you'll run into. But um, apart from that, you guys, can, well, you guys can have discussions with the individual staff that you're, that you're with. Um, I just kind of wanted to give you guys an idea of what's in the kit, so, it's, so when it's time to do it, you kind of know what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's what's in the kit. And, and a little thing that I like to do is once, it, once this thing is secured, I put one of those little uh, EKG pads pop it into that hole right there and then stick it to somebody's shoulder so that it's not just doing kind of one of these things. Um, but that's just me. That's just one of those little things. Um, so there's a lot to cover in a chapter, of course, and you're supposed to read these chapters. But the medical stuff, I'm confident you guys will be able to pick up just by reading just the practical clinical stuff that makes you guys look like you're all thumbs. You know, and it's not going to look smooth the first time you do it, no matter what. And everybody knows that. So I just want you to kind of get a feel for that. Any any questions or anything like that? Start off with spinals, man. Once you lose a couple spinals, you'll be you'll be fine. You'll get your confidence up and you'll be fine.